Is eating fugu worth the possibility of death? Do we try it or not? Of the channel podcast, Brian from London. Wow. Hello and welcome to the Abroad Japan podcast. Probably the best way of learning about life in Japan without actually being in Japan. I'm your host, Chris Broad. I'll be joined, as always, by England's top Japan enthusiast, Mr. Pete Donaldson himself. Pete, how the devil are you doing? What's going on? I'm good, Chris. I am T-minus... Uh, this is exactly how I started the podcast a few weeks ago. I'm T-minus whatever... Um, I'm about to leave to go to Japan in seven, a bit. eight, a ten few days. days. A few days, yeah, yeah, a few days. I'm, I'm really excited. It don't sound it. I just it. can't. I just want to put my out of office on. I won't put my out of office on. Everyone just gets in touch with me anyway. Um, <laughs> and I just want to f off. <laughs> I want to f off, and I want that time on the plane by myself when I'm not talking to anybody. Fourteen just, hours. Fourteen hours, and I'm gonna get off at um, Haneda Airport. I'm gonna kiss the ground mm. like I've been released from some kind of prison. Uh, like Terry Wade. <laughs> so there'll be it'll be three and a half years at that point, right? Since yeah. You've set foot in the land of the rising sun. On Luke and Petro, Luke said it's three and a half years, and I was like, Nah, it's not. And he went, Yeah, it's three. I mean, it's it was it's I mean, basic when you, it's 2020, and I was like, Oh yeah, it's 2023 this year, isn't it? That's pretty worrying. Wild. I remember your last trip over like it was yesterday. It was an mm. exciting time, but it, it almost felt like the cusp of the apocalypse because mm. there was it, it was it was during the All time closing down, wasn't it? Well, COVID was like starting to pop up in China and various mm. countries, and we were like, oh, there's something going around, and I was like, don't worry, it'll blow over in no time. Mm. Bell end. What a dickhead I'm. But I, I, under your bed in the hotel room in mm. Sapporo, there was just like loads. Of, I think a Chinese tourist had been staying in the room before here. Oh, it was like a mask. And there was a, yeah. a used mask that hadn't been cleared away under Pete's yeah. bed and some pills from like yeah. Patient Zero. Chinese like pills and stuff. And we were like, Patient oh, Zero. Pete's going to get that first. I'm going to get that first. Yeah, well, I went straight from Japan and then I think a few days later, I went to Cuba. <laughs> so super even, spreader, yeah, Pete Nelson. super like, and I like sort of moving it closer and closer. God damn the, it. You know, it was really uh, weird stuff. <laughs> As cases went from East Asia to Cuba in one <laughs> fucking foul swoop, yeah, that was a, it. Was a really weird time, but uh, I'm 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 excited to see you in Japan. Except I'm not because I'm not there. No, when you're in Japan, terrible planning. You ugh. terrible admin. I'm going to be here in London. I know. What a fail of that. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to look after my house. Fail. I'm going to look after my dog. I'm going to break into your house and steal your dog <laughs> oh, as revenge. I, so the, um, we we had to go to put the dog in, not really a kennel, but like I, I've a never palace. had to put a, well, it's Essex, isn't it? <laughs> Bougie. Um, <laughs> uh, so we took this place, so we're going to take this place where he's got like, uh, he's only like partly going to be there because my partner's mum and dad's going to look after it some of the time. But Lovely. For whatever reason, we couldn't do the full thing. So for a few days, he's going to be in this place that's got basically these little pods, like a love hotel for dogs. And oh. this dog is just, like, this dog is going to be like treated like the queen of bloody Sheba. Like he's going to have like his own um, fireplace, his what? own what? television, and also a uh, a big chandelier above his uh, above his bed. Are it's take, so funny. Are you taking the piss? It's Essex, man. That's what it. That's what they do. Well, how big's the pod? Um, probably a bit half half the size of this room. That's massive. That's not a pod. That's like bigger than my first apartment in Japan. I know. He's got a chandelier. He's have a lovely time. That's why I want to stay here. It's funny. I want to stay there. Want to stay in the dog How in the dog uh, palace. Yeah. She... Absolutely mad. Yeah. Love it. Wow. I mean, <laughs> yeah. We don't leave the cats with place in Japan, like the the kennels or the whatever you call yeah. it. The cattery. Mm. Uh, yeah. It's not that good. No, I think they don't get treated as well in Japan. I think we. I, I think we because. Um, you know, so as my we're gonna look after them for the whole thing, and then we were like, right, okay, well, it, something meant that we couldn't put them there for the whole time. So we were like, right. right, so we tried to get somebody in, like an in-home thing, mm. but obviously it's August and everyone's really busy, and we're literally asking two weeks before, but we managed to get them in this dog hotel. dog palace, dog palace. Oh my god! But yeah, I'm sure we'll have a good time. Good lucky dog. Yeah, yeah. Bloody, hell, bloody hell. That's great though. And uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm excited to hear about your your travels and your adventures in Japan. It's been long a long time. Since I've, uh, the... I've I've booked a few things like, for what? a laugh. Oh my god, like what? I've booked it. I booked three things um, for while we're in Tokyo. Rent a boyfriend for a day, or whatever <laughs> it is. <laughs> no, like, it's only very very sort of basic. That um, what's that fucking light thing that everyone gets a. It's oh, absolutely yeah. filthy. I know what you mean. It's absolutely disgusting. That thing, it's really dirty. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, yeah, I know what you mean. It's like Tokyo, the light show thing. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, 
Oh, I but it's kind of it's it. a bit long in its tooth now, so it's a bit stinky. Yeah. Totally. Um, and uh, I booked a uh, little micro pig cafe. Uh, no, not the classic, micro pig classic. Cafe. And uh, also uh, the big scramble um, building. Uh, oh, okay. Sort of sky thing. So you know. What a tourist! Yeah, I'm just, well, I am a tourist. You're, my partner, you're, you're more of a tourist. No, you're a Japan pro. You should be doing really extreme like weird what? thing. I don't know. Like fucking exactly. The donkey cafe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, just another cafe with a different animal in it. It's different animals. Yeah. All different right. animals in different ways. <laughs> oh man, it's but, Tokyo, isn't it? You got 14 hours on a plane, though. Yeah, that's quite the joke. I mean, I, I must I'm admit, stink. we've got we're going hand luggage, and I have got a big bag, and I've insisted that um, Sarah doesn't bring. I mean, to be fair, you can't run a, um, a hairdryer and all the usual accoutrement she'd bring. So I was like, you would, look, we're going light as hell. I'm going to be carrying everything. I want you to have the best holiday. I don't want you carrying Aww. a big bag and stuff. I don't want you having to carry a load of crap. Wow. I'm going to carry everything. Um, and so I don't think politically me having my big steam deck in, them in my bag, uh, if I've told her she can't have certain things, or, she, or I've <laughs> said, please don't take anything heavy, and I'm taking a steam deck with me. <laughs> that's naughty, isn't it? That's so you, I was well, you're about, taking it. I'm taking. I'm going to take the Steam Deck. So I love it. You bastard! I love it. I don't get to play it. So she can't take her favourite things. She uh, can't take her favourite things because the 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 the, 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 oh. the hair straighteners wouldn't work. Cause they're a different um, voltage, aren't they? It'll Evil. explode or uh, not work or whatever. They won't explode. They would explode. Not so. You just use an adapter. No, anything with a mortar uh, can't run over there. Yeah, it can. <laughs> All can right. now. All right. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't. Chris's email address is... The Abroad Japan podcast is not liable for any damage done to household items that may or may not explode. As soon as if you buy anything out there, you will need a step-down uh, controller thing. You will explode. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so you're just going to play video games on your flight for 14 hours? Yes, I am, Chris. You bastard. I'm going to play all the games that I've not played yet. I watched Mission Impossible films. <laughs> what? <I'll laughs> I watched like Mission Impossible 4, 5 and 6 on nice. the plane. Okay, good. Uh, don't, I always don't discover, because I'm on air now, there'll be nothing kind of like TV show wise that I'll discover. But maybe like, all of, I'll, I'll discover a TV show if I'm on BA or maybe Virgin, they put TV shows on that I'd never see again. I watched like a full series of a TV show, a sitcom about Diplo <laughs> one time. <laughs> Stuff that's flat I'd never watched. It's fucking brilliant. And uh, and uh, this other show about um, about a New York um, inner city kind of teacher I watched mm. last time, and that was a lot of fun. It was so good. I, I love discovering Aww. new TV shows, but a and probably won't be doing that kind of care. But. Some dodgy Japanese drama um, yeah, with a $4 absolutely. budget. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I found, I mean, I, I hate flying, and the flight is endless now, 14 hours. Right. The secret to making it go quicker is right. don't, ever look at the amount of time remaining on the flight I do it don't. as soon as I wake up don't look at as the as soon time. as I wake up I look at it no then I close my eyes then I open it look at it again it's not moved I just don't <laughs> I, I used to just stare at it for like 14 hours and yeah. the flight felt like 14 years now I don't look at it once and I sort of guesstimate oh maybe we're over Morocco maybe we're over Kyrgyzstan right. where are we flying now oh. but na- yeah don't look at the time ever just watch Mission Impossible four, five, six. <laughs> Keep your head down. I should never. I, I watched. Start, I watched a TV show called Hijack with Idris. I Elbrin. watched that. I watched that. I mean, it starts. T- I mean, it Terrible. is awful, awful, awful. It's hilarious. No, it's hilarious. He's in the sky, isn't it? It's so fun. You've got to watch this, guys. It's called Hijack. Idris Elba. Piece of shit. It, I, I was a bit worried. I was like, I don't like flying. Is it a good idea watching a hijack TV series about a plane yeah. being hijacked? Turns out it's fine because it's a joke. It's a joke of a TV And all shot. the terrorists are just people from Essex. <laughs> They're and all EastEnders actors. They're, They're all EastEnders. They're hilarious. They're like, you think we won't crash this plane, mate? I'll fucking show you. We're going to do it. We're going to do it, we are. <laughs> uh, it's so funny. It's like, this is unrealistic. No one from Essex would ever hijack a plane. Touch yeah, wood. Touch but wood. Like, yeah. 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 And it, it, far from making me like worry about flying, it made me laugh. Because no. I think, well, if these Muppets are going to hijack the plane, it shouldn't be a problem then. It's just a lot of like we'll drawing on stuff. Yeah. A lot of like he always had a crown when he needed it. But Idris Elba. Elba was good. He's a good actor, and he was good in that. He yeah. carried that show. He carried that show. Lordy. But uh, yeah, yeah. Don't watch that TV don't show. Watch, yeah, don't yeah. watch that. TV but we got show. a story from Eric from Surrey. Yeah. Uh, and he says, uh, "Dear Clementine, Chris, and Persimmon Pete, Ooh, I wanted to tell you about a memorable day, the most memorable day I had on my trip to Japan a few months ago. I was cruising along the picturesque Shimanami Kaido cycle route in Japan, feeling." Like the star of my own travel documentary. I love how well written these stories are. Mm. We don't feed them through chat GPT and say, <laughs> make this story sound good. Like you guys write the most amazing story. Long story short, though, continues Eric. 
Before I knew it, I was airborne. What the fuck? What? <laughs> Hijacked by Idris Elba. Uh, bike me and all. Oh, my God. Bike me and all. I landed with a thud. Bang. Uh, a startled seagull as my ah, only audience. Ah, 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 <laughs> it's, like we're, it's like we're there reliving the magic. Yeah. Just as I was sat there in a heap, my bike tangled beside me. A guardian angel. <sighs> There's a spot. A guardian angel ah, in, the fo- fist. Ah. <laughs> in the form of a local hero swooped in. A car stopped and out of it came a concerned face that belonged to the kindest stranger you could ever hope to meet. With a flurry of Japanese words and gestures, this wonderful person managed to convey that they were taking me to their home in Imabari City. Willingly, I hobbled into the car, my bike in tow, and off we went. I was greeted by a bustling family and we sat down to a feast of local dishes. This is a dream sequence at this point. Yeah. Eric's just smashed his head. <laughs> in a coma. And he's like... This sounds too good to be true. We shared stories through a combination of broken English, enthusiastic hand gestures, and the universal... And the universal language of laughter. I couldn't help but marvel at the incredible connection that can form between strangers, no matter a language barrier. (laughs) And just as it got dark, my newfound friend loaded me back into the car, along with a bag bursting with the juiciest oranges that I had ever seen. (laughs) (laughs) Their kindness and generosity knew no bounds as they dropped me off at the hostel that I'd initially planned to stay at. I waved them goodbye. (laughs) Goodbye, dear friends. Clutching my bag of oranges like a precious treasure. Falling off my bike had led me to an unforgettable evening with a local family. Cheers, guys. Eric from Surrey. So, a lad, <laughs> he's in Imabari and he's cycling along. He stacks it, face, in, face planting it in the ground. <laughs> um, a family stop, um, bundle him into a car. Yep. An emotional kidnapping. Um, take him to the house, um, feed him up with oranges and have a chat about life, love, the fruit of the loom, uh, and then um, just just kind of like chuck him out again. I don't. I turn to his hostel. Did this really happen? Like, I, mean, I, I get the feel. Look, we get stories like this all the time. We do. Where people befall something terrible and something amazing happens out of it, and I just feel that we might be at risk of getting people to Commits will crime. these well will will these things into um in, into existing. You know what I mean? Well, three... Like running into walls. <laughs> Smash themselves in the face with bricks. Oh, I threw myself. I threw myself off of Tokyo Tower, yeah, and I got exactly. some sushi. Yeah. yeah. I, I like three weeks ago. We had a story where some uh, some amazing listeners wandering through a town in Kumamoto City. Right. They wandered down the road illegally or something. Okay. They, they wandered down the middle of the road, didn't they? Right. And then the security guard was like, uh, "See my son. What are you doing? Mm. Look, it's a it's a paper crane, origami <laughs> crane." And, yes. the, and they went, "Oh, lovely." And they break yeah. the law and got a free origami crane. Now, yeah. Eric, falling off his bike, concussed, being dragged to a, a house. Yeah. Orange, ski desu ka? Eric san, orange tabetai desu ka? Like just, Eric's just sitting there like, I've fucking done my head in here. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, oranges. Yeah, I'll have an yeah, orange. Nice. Like, I want to be in the room for this interaction. What yeah. do they talk about? Yeah, well, how do you kind of like, I mean, presumably you knew a little bit of Japanese and a bit of gesticulation, so yeah. What did you, Orange is good. Yeah, just a love orange chat. Oh, yeah. I yeah. fucking love an orange. I love an orange. That's beautiful, though. I mean, the only thing that makes me feel this is real. Mm. Uh, fruits is good. Well, the only thing that makes me think this is real and not like a, a dream sequence caused by massive head concussion <laughs> right, yeah. is that the fruit of Imabari is oranges. And okay, that whole, yeah, so like that that all checks out, right? Yeah, yeah that yeah, region, yeah. Ehime, is famous for its oranges. Mm. They, like when I went there last, I was in the street and there was just a tap that just poured orange juice. Nice. At will. So. I mean, I th- just think that the sweet um, orangey kiss of the orange juice mixing with the spinal fluid pouring out of your nose, <laughs> I think it'd just be a beautiful just, brackish mixture. <laughs> just picturing Eric like on the pavement, blood all down his face and orange Rubbing juice an orange being into, <laughs> into the wound. Squeezed into ah! his arm. Eric San, there's only one thing to help you. You need the orange help. juice. What a beautiful <laughs> That's fucking amazing. Yeah. And people in Ehime, people in that part of South Japan are lovely. Yeah. Uh, and this is just a wonderful, most, uh, most wonderful story. That's like it. This is a top 10 yeah. abroad in Japan story time. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I Get love well it. Soon. Um, but oranges and pain aside, what is the news of the week in Japan? What's going on in Japan this week? Fill us in on the news, Mr. Dawson. Well, look, you, sometimes when people aren't giving you uh, oranges, you've got to buy your own bloody oranges. The Japanese supermarket 
has started analysing customers' in-store behaviour and feeding it into a generative AI to drive an avatar that makes real-time suggestions about stuff you might want to buy. The Arak uh, Mitajiri uh, supermarket in the city of Hofu uh, started a trial of this arrangement yesterday, wielding tech from Fujitsu that uses video cameras to detect shoppers who linger at displays, compare multiple products, bend down towards a shop display, careful, uh, pick up a product or respond to in-store content. Observations of such behaviours are used to tune prompts for a generative AI manifested as a customised avatar concierge Ooh. that pumps out through, presumably, speakers, custom sales patter and or content. So I imagine you walk up to a store, you're looking at, you're comparing apples and oranges. What well, if you're looking at condoms? And the shop's like, condom, <laughs> Kai Well, all right, well, <laughs> if someone is doing that, what would you sell them? What would you sell? Lube, oh, yeah, yeah. lubricant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And oranges. And oranges. <laughs> and doused with amyl. <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, this, is, this is scary. I don't know but, if this is good or 1984. I guess this is kind of like what's happening online at the moment, where you look at one thing and then and your then phone just rec- yeah, 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 recommends yeah, yeah. you all sorts of crap. I mean, I, I, mean, I, would, I, mean, I mean, if you're like, if you are, I mean, it would make sense. It would be quite organic and it wouldn't quite as be full on, like, you're not buying a condom and someone's coming up behind and going, buy some fucking cheese prick. Like, like that's not happening. <laughs> it's just sort of going, hey, do you want, hey, do, they're Italian. Hey, I do, you want, do you want to sell anything else with that? Um, and yeah, that, I, 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 I kind of understand it. And to be honest, I don't like anyone talking to me in shops. I am, I, I don't like being sold to. I yes. don't feel like I'm infringing on any infringing on anybody else's uh, life. I don't want to feel like I'm putting anyone out. And so, yeah, I would prefer just to be able to have a little little roll around the store without I, anyone talking to me. The team apparently mm. advised Fujitsu that warmth and competence indicators of a customer service provider's personality and knowledge, as well as the design and functionality of the product, influence consumer buying decisions. And that led to a model that can estimate the behavior transition prob- probability of presenting customer service. Oh, my God, this is so technical. <laughs> Basically, Fujitsu think they know what the customer wants. Yeah. I mean, well, they do because they've used their AI. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of cool. I yeah. would like to try it once, but it could be kind of annoying, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that's... <sighs> um, hmm. Can't you just shop in peace? I, yeah. I'm, like, I'm like you. I don't like going in a shop, and then someone comes over and they're like, "Oh, yeah, do you want to look at this? Do you want? No, leave me cheese. alone. I'm just looking. Buy some fucking cheese, mate. Like often, right. shop staff will come over in Japan and you know ask for stuff, and you're like, right. oh, you know, oh, mitteru dake like, right. I'm just looking. Mitteru is mitteru. I'm like, looking. Mitteru, like I'm just looking. Yeah. Mitteru dake yes, yes. Right. I was looking. Mitteru. What's that? So mit. Uh, mit- well, miru is like to look, right? Ah. And mitteru is the verb. Of looking Miteru. right now in the Miteru. moment. Miteru. It's speedy Japanese. Miteru. Miteru. The way it just sounds like meat. It does. Miteru. Or meteru. Like a meter. Or Francois yeah. Mitterrand, the um, French premier. <laughs> I just want you to go into an electronic shop in Japan and be like, orangey. <laughs> orangey. <laughs> meteru orangey. Kai time disc. <laughs> I'm looking at the oranges. Orange. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at the vegetables. <laughs> meteru, you <laughs> say. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I want to be there for your trip to Japan. <laughs> I want to be there. Yeah. But when you when you're in Japan, now you're gonna be there in a week or whatever. Go and go here. Go here. Go and do it. Yeah. You should go to some of the places we read out in the articles, like the the uh, you know the, the shop where there's robots walking around mm. trying to sell you nonsense. Oh, the city of Hofu. Where's that? Hofu. Where is that? I think it's ah, I think it's Tokyo, but near Tokyo. Look it up. Am I right? Uh, yeah. West Tokyo. Don't know. Well, <laughs> Typed okay. it in. Took what, too long. No, it's near, according to this, it's uh, Yamaguchi. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. Just as you get into between Hiroshima and Kitakushi. Well, do you know what the food of Yamaguchi is? Oh, is it cheeseburgers? <laughs> Better than cheeseburgers. Guns. Is it guns? It's not guns. <laughs> they don't eat <laughs> guns it? and cheese. cyanide. Is it? No. Bears. <laughs> it's fugu. Fugu. Blowfish. Yes. Still not got involved with that. It's good stuff. Like yeah. it, it's flavorless. It's like translucent nothing. Oh, cool! <laughs> Thanks. You really saw that. You should do that generative AI thing. Have some fugu. It is colorless and tasteless. You will not enjoy it. You will endure it. Life is endurance. How about condoms? <laughs> but it's it, you put it in the ponzu vinegar sauce. And right, amazing. and it just tastes like ponzu vinegar. Oh, it tastes yeah, like yeah, vinegar. Good. Yeah, it's nice. good. Oh, I want some now. All right, fine. that's good. Go down. Go to Yamaguchi. Get your weird, futuristic 1984 shop and have a fugu. 
All right. Live the dream, Pete. Live the dream. Lovely. We're back in just a moment, guys. We have the stories, comments, and questions <sighs> in the fax machine. Wow. And we're back with the fax machine. What have we got this week from our listeners, Mr. Dawson? We got a message from Grace. Oh, Grace, save your money for the children. Oh, Grace, save your money for the... Save your money for the... Congratulations on the book, Chris. I just wanted to ask, uh, Chris, is there anything left in Japan that you haven't done that you really want to do one day? Or maybe something that would take a lot of planning or time that you haven't been able to get around to? Oh, I don't know. Oh. <sighs> I, the, people always ask me to do the 88 Shrine Pilgrimage in Shikoku. That seems to, like too many. To which I say, fuck off. Like I, I'm not gonna, I can barely go to one shrine and climb the stairs to one temple, let alone you 88. You have to like, wash your hands in every shrine. I mean, that's just basic hygiene, isn't it? Yeah, but you'd need, you'd need some kind of, um, you'd need something to look after your hands. You'd have to wear fake hands so they wouldn't get too dried out. I, I don't know what... You know, no. like in every sort of shiny temple, you yeah. got to wash your hands, right? Yeah. But hey. if you put in water over your hands, you're gonna have like you're gonna need some cocoa butter or something, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> you've overthought this. Yeah, uh, I mean, you can do it. That's, now. that's one of the aspects I've overthought. Yes. Well, <laughs> the 88 shrines which you're gonna run out of coins. You're gonna need 88 coins in your pocket. I think you'd be more worried about your legs falling off. Right. Yeah. Because it's 88 shrines. Too many. Why did they stop? Why didn't they stop it? I don't why know. Why stop at eighty eight? Well, they should have stopped at sixty nine. Two hundred. Living a joke. Sixty nine. Sixty nine shrines. Sexy like. joke about a sexual position. But eighty eight the shrines. Some of them are in Ehime, land mm. of oranges. So you right. can have an orange. If yeah. you fall over on the way to the temple, a random family will pick you up and mm. drag you off to <laughs> Imabari. Yeah. Um. I. I might. No. I'm not going to do that. Um. No. I actually I don't really know. I've run out of things to do. Run out of things to do. At this point, it's just me doing the same videos over and over, isn't it? Have you been Robot Cafe? <laughs> Robot Cafe. <laughs> it opened, didn't it? It reopened and then it closed. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah, I don't it's even not there know anymore. It, I don't know if it did don't, reopen. It didn't it didn't reopen again. Because I went it I was in Shinjuku briefly. for my um yeah. day in the life video. I did a video and I walked around there to check it out and yeah. it just it it wasn't there. I, I very much enjoyed your <laughs> Oh, tour that you did for Tokyo Creative, you and Sharla. Um, oh, yeah. And where you went past the Asahi building and you mimed drinking a big pint. Um, but um, let's face it, Chris, if you screenshot you dr- miming a big pint, it kind of looks like you're feeding In a, the dirty a, a, mind of Pete Donaldson. A large... Don't say anything. Something. Demonetize this new podcast. Demonetize it. On the podcast before, we could say whatever we want. Now we have to worry about YouTube words. Um, probably be <laughs> demonetized for half the words we've said. I, I just never thought we'd get... Like, it's, the internet used to be dangerous. It used to be it's dangerous now. death pictures and I, nudie ladies. It used to be frightening. Yeah. And now it's so boring. Even the pornography is boring. Well, it's rubbish. I called a duck the C word last year. And yeah. that demonetised the video. And Good, I deserve it. Stop having to go at ducks. Because, you know, <laughs> ducks have got the ears of big YouTube. That you duck know. ruined my shot. But, like, I, I see, I mean, we spoke about this before, but, like, People on like Instagram and stuff, like these kind of like uh, kind of inspirational accounts and stuff, like they can't use words like death or suicide or you know mm. they they x out they asterisk out the um e in death or and it's like these are words we use for stuff you know what i mean it's yeah, not I, like I like like a career suicide we, we couldn't yeah, use yeah, that yeah. phrase in 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 the first few minutes of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a video it's it's t- it's turning because it's all algorithmic and it's all kind of like you computers you like search through all the content and because there's no the computers don't have any sort of context for it they're kind of pulling out so much uh, demonetizing everything and so it means it it just sort of moves everything into a weird kind of like prohibition era trying to get around the senses but not really kind of disneyland really and it's just bizarre thought police well in the future i mean people complain about that sort of thing but like that's the real that's the real quiz in the future, shops will tell you what to buy, yeah. and language will not be allowed Bye. to be used. Naughty yeah. words. Mm. Yeah, it is a bit. It is a bit messed up. I remember mm. the good old days. I mean, even I, I do swear. Think of the Scottish, Chris. <laughs> well, yeah. Think of the Scottish or New Zealand, of course. Or New Zealand. Oh, the, the c words used in every sentence <laughs> right, in New Zealand. Is it right? Okay. And uh, never been. Yeah, never had like, the pleasure. I uh, yeah, I, I still swear in my videos, but most of my mm. friends bleep it out. Yeah, uh, YouTube well, they bleep yours out <laughs> <laughs> when they're listening. Beep beep. That's a shame, shame. Yeah. Thought police. Piss. There. We got a story. <laughs> a question. <laughs> a story. Good question. From Charlie from Southampton, who says, hello, guys. A friend who lives in Japan and can speak Japanese said to me that they found 
the magic of being in Japan dwindled when they could speak the language. I half get what they mean mm. in that it didn't feel as mysterious because they could understand everything and they weren't totally clueless anymore. Do you relate to that at all, Chris? Do you ever wish you couldn't speak the lingo? Is it still whimsical being in Japan after 10 years? Keep it up, Charlie from Southampton. Well, Charlie, I'm still not the best at Japanese. Right. But I don't think... I, I, no, I don't, I don't agree with that. I think opening, speaking Japanese opens up a lot more doors. You can go into a bar and talk about anything in a way that I can't. I, I can only talk about oranges and YouTube when I go into a bar. <laughs> but if I had more words in my arsenal, I could talk about politics. I could talk about geography. I could talk about philosophy. Uh, and if I'm Pete Donaldson, I could just go, Chigaimas. <laughs> Different. Or yeah. Chikan. Mm. What, I mean, what do you think, Pete? I don't know. I, I kind of um, get that a little bit. I mean, and, but no one's that good, are they? <laughs> There's so many dialects and sort of like Not slang really, and yeah. stuff like that. No one's that good. So, um, yeah, I, I could see that that being an issue, but I mean, it's a nice issue to have, isn't it? I Learning, mean, I would argue like the language. traveling around Japan over the years, going to every single prefecture has taken some of the magic out for me because yeah. I know what's over every hill. Yes. You could point to a hill and I'd be like, I know what's over that hill. <laughs> A farm. A bear. A bear. A bear and a farm. <laughs> There's a bear. farm and a bear. It's a uh, bear trying to get in the farm and the farm trying to get the bear out. It's a... <laughs> bear wanna, farm fighting. I want to do that. I want to go on a tour <laughs> with you around each prefecture and you go, what's over that hill? And I, a it's a wild bear boar. Farm. It's yeah. a bear farm. Yeah. More bears. Yeah. Um, but no, I, 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 honestly, I wish I knew, I wish I was a little bit better at Japanese than mm. I am because I'd have the confidence to have a lot more conversations with strangers. Not yeah. that I don't already, but like, yeah, it would open some doors, I think. Conversations with strangers. Uh, hello. <laughs> Konnichiwa. Supermarket. Konnichiwa. Hello. Orangey. I just want to hear about the man and the orange. <laughs> he got pet up by a family in the oh bank my God. and he got his face. He wants an orange. <laughs> Uh, you're horrible. <laughs> we got... <laughs> you are with that boy. We got uh, one here from Brian yeah. from London. All the questions seem to be from the UK recently. They are, yeah. I've noticed that since we've moved to YouTube, all the questions are from British people. Right. Whereas before, when we did audio only, all the questions were from Swedish people. So Because they're just more creative with their minds. Swedish people Peter don't mind. watch YouTube. Right. Or British people are shout. powerful. I don't know. <laughs> Cod, Chris and Piranha Pete. I'm yep. going to Japan my wife next month, and I've been trying to plan it. And ever since that Simpsons episode, I've been curious to try Fugu. Oh, well, that's come up. That, that yeah. wasn't even planned, my no. conversation about Fugu. But... Is eating fugu worth the possibility of death? Do we try it or not? Other channel and podcast, Brian from London. We kind of covered this, but yes. Sounds like a resounding yes. Uh, if you like the taste of Bonzo. It's fucked. If, I mean, it's fucked. Fugu is good, but if, they, if you get the wrong chef, people do die of it every year, I think. But it's only people that prepare it at home. Yes. Who are kind of like, I know what I'm doing. Don't you worry. Yeah, oh, I've killed worry, myself mate. now. I'll show you the YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> so there's any YouTube? There can't be YouTubes the guy, of people preparing fugu. Pete Donaldson's Guide to Preparing Fugu. Yeah. Oh, just cut the tail off, innit? Just and uh, pop, that, pop that little thing in the middle. I mean, That's I, the sauce. When I did my video of it, which you should watch on the YouTube, uh, we should recommend it with this video. Here's a thumbnail. Ooh, yeah. so if someone edits this video. Yeah. Uh, it's horrible. The guy gutted and killed the figure in front of me and it was still breathing and he'd ripped its head off. Oh. But its mouth was still there breathing. Oh, horrible. Anyway, they, yeah, oh. they cut out the, it's the part of the fish, the liver or the kidneys or something. But yeah. it's got this uh, tetrodotoxin and if you consume it, even the smallest amount, it's, it, it paralyzes you basically and you sort of asphyxiate while fully conscious and it's not nice. Yeah. So don't, don't do that. Don't eat the wrong fugu. Don't eat that. But odds are you'll be fine. Yeah. I, I mean, I was a little bit like, when I did eat it, I was a little bit like, eh, is this worth the risk? Yeah. yeah but it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> you'll be fine. You should try it, though, Pete. You should try it. should. Um, I know. I, I like the idea of it, but every time I've tried to go in a, uh, in one of the restaurants, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, it, the voting closed or... I've said the wrong thing. They've died from too much fugu. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's just asleep. Messed it up. Everyone's just asleep. But yeah, don't worry. It is safe for the most part. Just don't get it in like a mum and pup style dodgy restaurant where they're kind of like working at making it up as they go along. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> don't read the reviews first. <laughs> Whenever you go and do it, read the reviews first. Yeah. Because uh, that'll be a pretty big indicator as to how screwed you are. <laughs> One star yeah, review. De yeah. My wife died. Yeah. Like, I, mean, I was going to say, like, dead men did tell no tales <laughs> yeah. on the YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Just be advised. But be careful. It's good stuff, though, with a bit of vinegar. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Keep the stories, questions, comments coming in to Rebel in Japan podcast at gmail.com. We'll be back later in the week, guys, to all over again. But for now, no matter where you might be out there in the big word world, have yourself a great few days, and we'll see you right back here to do all over again.
on the Abroad Japan podcast. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Have some fugu. Have some oranges. Bye.